Hi everyone, I'm Henny with the LEGO Foundation. And I am Pierre, also from the LEGO Foundation. Today we are going to very briefly introduce the Play Facilitation Spectrum to you. Now Pierre, we've already cheated a bit and done an activity. We did, we played. Yes. So what we did was that I asked Hannah if she could build an animal uh, f from her childhood and uh, she did and so did I. What did you build Hannah by the way? I built an owl uh, because my sisters uh, called me an owl and I was quite excited about uh, wildlife documentaries as well as a kid so this is what came into my mind when you asked me. And I built a dog because I was obsessed with dogs. Still is a bit. <laughs> Just That's okay. But thank you so much for playing, Hannah. And it was sure. it was quite fun. Uh, so I facilitated this, and you were like the student in this. Yes. And uh, we have this spectrum where we try we have we try to give ourselves some kind of idea of where on this spectrum different learning through play activities are. That's right, because learning through play is not one thing. It can be a whole range of activities, and that has uh, something to do with the goals you have for learning if you have goals, and it also says something about what you should do as an adult. Um, but let's have a look. Where on the spectrum would you put the activity you gave me just now? So what I tried to, at least, from a facilitation point, was to kind of, of get somewhere in the middle yes. of this spectrum. Right. Um, I was playing with you, so I was like co-playing, and I tried to give you some guidance, but still leave you some choice in doing it. Right, so actually you gave me something to go on, you gave me a frame, mm -hmm. you said an animal from your childhood, um, but I still had a lot of choice in what to build and yeah, how? Um, you also gave me specific materials, so all of that taken together means we're somewhere between structure and choice. Yes. Now, if we wanted to make this more structured, yes. just maybe I was unsure and you needed to give me a bit more guidance, what could we do? I, I think I could take, we could, just moving it a little bit towards this, I could have decided what animal you should have been. Right. Interested. So I could limit your choice yes. by, by doing that. Going all the way out here, I could actually have made an animal that you should also be doing. Ah, so you could even prep the creature that I was supposed to create. I've seen that happen around the world where the adult actually has made like a model that the students are then like redoing yeah, I've seen that as and, well. and looks really pretty on the wall. Yeah. Um, oh, but Pia, that's true. If you create copies, some people will say that that's not learning uh, creativity and imagination. And that's true enough. But having instructional activities has its own benefits because mm -hmm. when you have a model, that you copy, you have to remember uh, instructions, keeping those in your mind, and you have to have the figure in your head and try to recreate it. That's not so much imagination and creativity, but it is uh, executive functions, it is spatial, um, spatial awareness, and loads of other uh, learning outcomes. So it's got its own strengths. True, and modeling is a strong learning way, so nothing wrong with that. From, a, from an instructor, from a facilitation point of view, I would be more of an instructor in this and yes. kind of giving you, controlling what's supposed to be happening. Yeah. You could say in many ways that this is a bit more a classical approach, or at least that's, that's what many of us... That's teaching as we know it, right? That's many of us have experienced yeah. in school, right? And uh, so, yeah, so that would, that would be the tweaks I would do if we were supposed to go that way on the spectrum. Right. And if we wanted to make it even more open, more open, I would say I, we, I could have given you uh, more freedom in this activity. More choice. More choice. More so choice. what if I said you, not just a childhood, I could say that build any animal you'd like instead of uh, limiting it to your childhood. Any animal. I was also telling that you're supposed to use this material. I could have opened that up and, and said you are any allowed material. to use any material that you Could you like. join me? We could have gone together that we should do it together or together with another another uh, peer that you have in, in yeah. the space. Yeah. That would definitely have given Move you it all the way over there. even more choice. Right. So as soon as you've got more choice in what to build, how to build, whom to build with, where, uh, then we are definitely in this space. Exactly. I've noticed something though, Pia. Mm -hmm. As we do different kinds of activities, your role changes. It does. It does. And I would say moving down this line gives me often I would say some space to move into like observing more because right. I don't have to be in charge at all times. I, right. But I, I'm more managing the play. Could it be a co-player as well? Mm -hmm. So 
But from time to time, I probably also would have to maybe get back and say stop <laughs> if it goes out of hand or like being the one who's timekeeping or. Yes. So, yes, you, you are you are really, really managing a lot of roles, but it is definitely different out here. I like it over here in many ways because I'm a bit more on the sideline to your learning. Right. Uh, where I'm not handhelding your learning as mm -hmm, much mm -hmm. as I am here. So it is different. But I think for many, in the, at least in the professional space, formal schooling, that can be quite scary because you feel a lack of, of that you lose control. Yeah, it is a bit hard. It is. It is a bit hard. It is. But is it okay? It is fantastic. Oh, okay. You, you get, I would say, the feedback you get from the children is amazing. And I would wish for all facilitators to feel that. To feel that excitement Second. and that engagement from the kids. I totally agree. So what we're saying is, um, learning to play is not one kind of activity. It can happen across the spectrum of practices. Each kind of activity has its strengths. It, some are good for some forms of learning, some are good for other kinds. We recommend that you move across the spectrum so the kids have opportunities for all kinds. Um, we also highlight that as an educator or as an adult, your role needs to change with where the kids are. Um, and we recommend it because if you want to engage the kids, if you want to give them a learning to play experience, you need to tackle all of them. That's what we do every day in the LEGO Foundation, trying to inspire everyone with these thinking. So we want you to make sure that you Follow the LEGO Foundation, read our white papers where we've written down all of this. Yes. Uh, check out the social media channels and yeah, help us get more inspired on this.